Welcome to a new live stream of Flower Circus. Today we're going to talk with Willem van der Hoge from Floris. He's going to talk about all about, uh, or he's going to tell us all about uh, Florius, what's going on uh, at their farms at the moment, what he's thinking uh, of the situation now and his vision for the future. So let's welcome uh, Willem. Um, here we have Will Willem, welcome. Hi, <laughs> good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Yeah. So first of all, and the most important questions, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm here yep. from uh, from my home. Office is closed, so uh, yeah, <laughs> working from home nowadays. Yeah, closed in a way. We we're here in uh, in Dubai in a 24/7 lockdown, so uh, everybody's working uh, and living at home. So it's a, it's an interesting uh, dynamic. Yeah, but, uh, it's doable. But the office is still running. Yeah, the office is still running. We're now with 10 people, and we have uh, this software called Slack. Uh, with that, we're in contact with the rest of my team, uh, and everybody's yeah from their own place. Uh, but we're still uh, yeah working as one uh, one group uh, from home, selling flowers across the world wherever we can. Okay, so that that's still a continuous process, only from a different place. Yeah, yeah, and a bit more complicated. Yeah, can you tell us a bit more about Florius? Yeah, so Florius, we are distributors of the uh, Veronica Smart series and the Hypericum Coca series. Uh, with farms in Kenya and Ethiopia, and we uh, sell to customers all over the world, from Sydney to San Francisco. Um, Flora has been in the flower market since 1995, um, and yeah, we're, we're specialized in, uh, in in summer flowers. That's uh, that's what we do. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's in a nutshell uh, what we uh, what we what we do. Yeah, and you also do your own breeding, right? Yeah, so we're breeders, growers, we do the whole distribution. So we're a company who has uh, pretty much a vertical uh, uh, integrated corporation. Um, so on our farms, it's the varieties from Florius which are being grown. And I only sell the varieties of Florius uh, uh, to all the customers. So we're, so we're very much in control from the, from the cutting all the way to the customer. Okay, yeah, that's that's great that you have the whole process. So also with breeding, you exactly know what you need, or yeah, you, yeah. you should know. <laughs> yeah, we, breeding is a very very long, a uh, uh, long game. It can take years, yeah. up to up to ten years to make a new variety. So new varieties which come up now, we we started with that uh, in the last crisis. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's a bit. It's 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 a slow process, but uh, yeah, yeah something for the long run okay can you tell us a little bit more about the situation in africa at the moment because you're in uh, ethiopia and in kenya uh, is there a difference between the two countries what's happening over there or yeah what, what i'm getting from uh, uh from the farms is uh, yeah it, it ain't easy at the moment um uh, also the whole corona situation also landed in kenya and ethiopia uh, I, I just got an update from Kenya. They're now on about 200 uh, infections in the country uh, with about eight deaths. But uh, uh, living-wise, uh, the country is in a curfew at night. So between uh, 7 till 5, uh, the country is more or less in a lockdown. During the days, yeah. there, is no, there is no movement uh, from village to village or from district to district. Um, yeah, business go and, and life goes on, but everybody yeah. is very is, is, is being cautioned to uh, to have their distance, to to have hygiene controls. But it's definitely uh, not an easy situation uh, over there. Yeah. And what do you do at the farm in Kenya to uh, avoid uh, infections? Um, I think in general, the protocols being implemented throughout all our farms are, are pretty much in line with what you see, uh, what you see else in the world and the social distancing, the, the uh, keeping uh, the hygiene also in transportation. Uh, we anyhow, we are at the moment on about 75% of our workforce in terms of part time shifts. Uh, yeah. so, so we can try to keep the, the team more or less together. Uh, but we're working a little bit in, uh, in, uh, in lesser hours and it's nearly in every single company within the group either is in holland here in dubai or in in uh, in africa or in colombia yeah uh, so so that's basically what's uh, what's going on yeah and in terms of demand uh no if of course it dropped i think the demand of the of the flowers but can you see already an increase again or uh no, not really. No, <laughs> no, demand, no demand in general. In 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 a way, 
if you look at the flower industry uh, as a whole, eh, we have our weddings, we have our event, our parties, those are gone. Yeah. Uh, we, we have our e-commerce business that is still pretty much operational. And I think in many countries, even some, some of those markets are up. We see in Europe quite an interesting uh, um, segment on the florist delivering to the houses, to the homes, to the elderly. That is something which is uh, which is is going, I think, is fairly okay. Yeah. Um, you have the supermarket sales is there, so uh, roughly about, I think, roughly about fifty to sixty percent of the market, depending on it's between seventy to fifty to seventy percent. Depending the uh, depending where you are in the world, I think some countries are even eighty to ninety percent down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty shit. Yeah, but there is, uh, yeah. <laughs> it could also yeah it depends on in which stage the country is. Is it the first two weeks after the the the, the crisis hit them, uh, or the lockdown hit them? Then you can see it's down to almost zero or ten percent, and later on you see the countries, uh, yeah, starting up a little bit again where they can. Especially the supermarkets. Yeah, and look, eventually, as a where it doesn't matter where you are on the chain. If you're a, if you're a grower or a wholesaler or a florist, or if you know that your weddings and events are not going to come back within the next several months, if that's the scenario you as a company make, you got to focus on the other segments. Yeah, uh, and and that's what we try to do, and I think that's what the Flower Bureau Holland is trying to do, which I think they 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 came with an absolutely amazing. Uh, a campaign with uh, um, that they put out, um, and yeah, it is. We we have to look at hope, and yeah. uh, uh, and and there are a lot of elderly at the moment at home. You cannot visit your grandparents, so send them flowers. You cannot. Um, uh, you're working. I'm working here in my house. I, I can't even buy here in the supermarket at the moment flowers because you know there are hardly any flights to Dubai. But yeah. you you want you want to have flowers in your in your office, in your home office, or on your kitchen table. Um, if everybody is all day at home, yeah, you want to cheer it up and yep. you want to give a bit of, of, of joy. And, and that's, I think, where we as an industry all together got to focus upon a bit. Um, and um, yeah, I, that's what we try as a grower, try to put our, uh, our flowers into where, wherever we can. Yeah, I think we need more and more uh, to send out the message that it's not only uh, nice to have flowers or plants in your house, it is proven with several studies that it will help your mood as well. So, uh, and not only your mood, a lot of things it will help you. So we should bring out that message more and more. It's uh, actually, it's, uh, it's a pity that we needed this crisis to tell people this. But okay, now that we do, let's, let's keep on doing that. I think that's, that's very important. Uh, in terms of sales, you said, okay, you switched more from the events to, uh, to retail and other parts uh, of the flower sales. Uh, how can you see that uh, uh, in, in, in packaging, for example? Are you uh, sending more in bulk or just less in bulk? What do you do at the moment? The first thing what we what we focused on is you wanna if you look at that other segment what we looked upon is you want to give them value, yeah. you want to give them the best possible product for a, a, a fair decent price. Look, we we already spend the amounts and costs and everything on on the production side, so eventually it's a matter of flying it and 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 that of course and the, and the selling expense and that of course needs to recover. What already happened in the previous month on the growing, it's already in the field. So yeah, you know, you know. So so what you want to bring on in our case on the auctions or in your or in the United States or in the direct markets, we want to give them a good value product, which is usually the, the stuff which normally would have ended up in the event segment. Yeah. And now you want to want to deliver that to the bouquet makers at a price where they also can work with, and 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 that's eventually what we're aiming for at the auctions. Uh, so to to bring the product in. Uh, a good product for a very good price. Yeah, uh, and we will keep on shipping enough flowers into the market when we're constantly on that. You know, this is not the time that we need to uh, hit top prices. That, that that's not about it. It's about having making the people use uh, use our flowers because yeah. eventually our flowers are in very well known, especially the in the top segment, known for very long longevity, long vase life. They can ship. They can travel. Yeah, uh, and 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 logistically, what we're seeing now a lot happening is customers buying in uh, bulk in boxes, and especially smaller, tiny eight boxes. That is, yeah. uh, 
that is something where we see a, a quite a growth in uh, in the segment, um, especially in Europe. In US, it's pretty common. Everything is sold in boxes or Japan, but in yeah. in in, uh, in Europe, a lot of sales is still by the bucket. But if they buy in boxes, they can utilize their logistics much more efficient. Nobody needs to repack it. The florist can nicely unpack it. It's you know it has kind of multiple varieties in a box. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we, uh, we we're focusing upon, and 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 in our web shop, we uh, we try to offer that uh, uh, attractively to all our customers. Yeah, yeah. So, was... so with so with less people, they can uh, handle more flowers easier and quicker and and faster through the chain. Um, and um, yeah, we also try to be the provider of of inventory. We also have that's an um, yeah that's what we try to do. Yeah, yeah. I just showed the boxes to the people you're uh, talking with me uh, by phone, so you don't see that I, I just showed the boxes uh, to the people. So you got you got mixes with uh, Hypericum, you got mixes with uh, Veronica's. It's, it's yeah, that, that's that's basically it. We, we don't grow, we grow. We're pretty good at Hypericum. We're pretty good at Veronica's. That's yeah. uh, mainly it. We do. We also do some Astrancia, but that's at the moment a little bit on the. On the, on the low focus, the focus is mainly on Hypericum and Veronica. And that's yeah. that's what we try to do best. Yeah, and that's what you're doing quite well, actually. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Production-wise, uh, you said uh, once it's growing, we can't stop it. But um, now that this crisis uh, hit all of us, uh, are you changing some things in production? Or are, is there less production? Or what are you doing? Now, with the group, we merely looked at several scenarios and and and... We simply saw that the event segment, I was myself, I worked in 2008 in the United States. Um, and during that previous crisis, you saw that part of the segment stop. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's a, it's quite a large uh, part of the total sales. So we, you know, the flowers is demand and supply. So we in our, in our supply also chose uh, uh, to cut back. Um, but we did that strategically. So we chose several varieties, which we either would have, uh, um, uh, how do you call it, expire in one or two years because new varieties come up. We're breeders. Yeah. So every, every year we come up with, every year we come up with new varieties. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we, we, we had a few varieties. We, we did it a bit faster with, and we actually introduced a few new varieties, but overall we went down depending on which far, on the farms within 15 to 30 percent uh, in production uh, overall yeah but uh, we also have two new farms coming up and uh, several new varieties so eventually we, we're strategically planning a bit that if you look into the fall um, a lot of new products will uh, will pop up again yeah one of the new products uh, you got uh, the Veronica smart Navy yeah yeah. Yeah, it's a very long, it's a long Veronica with a long hat, one of the strongest varieties we've ever produced. Um, okay. uh, so again, if you focus into value and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and a nice, uh, a nice full Veronica, then this is, this is one of the crops. It is, it's, it's, it, it travels and it's, it holds and it has a very long vase life. So yeah, it's okay. one of the newest products uh, we have. And it's already on the market, or it's going to be on the market? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we introduced it a few weeks ago in the market, and uh, yeah, it's 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 going. It's get it's getting out there. Yeah. And, uh, we're slowly, slowly trying to spin a bit of marketing in it, but uh, yeah, it's come on. The, it came on the market. I think it around uh, when the whole crisis hit. So, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> timing wise, not so great. No. So uh, maybe we will show it again. This is the new one. Yeah. <laughs> it's already available. No, it's <laughs> Navy. Very, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a very beautiful blue uh, blue Veronica. Yeah, and you also had a new Hypericum, or a new Hypericum is coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. We have Coco Kimono. It's a it's a pinkish fuchsia kind of uh, Hypericum, so it's a mix between pink and reddish. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, again, we we try to eventually we want to bring the whole spectrum of colors, uh, yeah. which is possible. And uh, and and this is one of our newest varieties in there. Um, it's a nice, it gives a bit of spring color in it. So, uh, yeah, it's nice for spring and summer. So, yeah. We, uh, uh, talking about new varieties, we've got a question. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, want to ask Willem how they are doing with their breeding process during these times? 
Yeah, good question. Uh, in, in general, that's pretty much going on. On, on our farms, we're in, uh, in the lower, uh, uh, well, overall in lower um, staff or in, 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 in part, several part-time, but we keep on innovating. The whole innovation machine within Florius uh, uh, keeps on going. The, yeah. the, same, the same applies to my programmers, my developers. Actually, in this stage, we within the company, quite a, a big portion of it is, is, is currently dedicated to innovation because they maybe have a little bit less daily operational work. So you focus more on innovation. So yeah. if ever breeding would be important, it's now. So that that we keep on going fully. We're not stopping that. Yeah, and like you said, it's it's not uh, in, in a few months you have a new variety. It's, it's about, uh, we're talking about years. Yeah, it's about years. But actually now it's for us more important to 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 be extra uh, uh, critical upon our breeding. Um, because we are now making more land available, eh, we're retiring products quicker. So that means we also will come back yeah. Some very very beautiful new varieties in the in the Veronica Smart range in the Hypericum Coco range, to replace those colors that went out. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, there will be I think something very special. Okay, just let us know, and then uh, hopefully we can show with the Flower Circus uh, your new varieties as well. Ah, I definitely will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last year, or maybe uh, already longer, uh, you had plans to start in Colombia as well. Uh, what happened with those plants now? No, everything is actually, you would, would not be surprised, but things are pretty much going according to plan. Um, we, we split the whole project, so we're in the, in the Bali de Cauca in Colombia. Yeah. Uh, north, northwest of Cali, we have production, and in uh, Pereira, we have our processing facility. Um, so yeah, we set up the whole, uh, the whole project. We've split it up into several phases. Yeah. Um, and the first phase is you know, the, the planting is going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so everything is built and constructed. We're working on the final bits of our, of our processing facility. Um, and we're working on the final bits of the first phase. But more or less, uh, uh, that project keeps on going. Yeah. Yes, in Col Colombia, also here, we are only by law allowed because the country is in lockdown yeah. or essential, as into essential work. So it's about 40% uh, of the staff. But by and large, a lot of the plans have been made and, and we try to keep on that schedule um, yeah. that eventually after this is all over, we can, uh, we can yeah, come into the market with uh, great Colombian Hypericum Cocos. So that's, uh, that's still a plan. Yeah. And uh, if I'm correct, it's, it's outside the, the, the normal uh, growing area for flowers, right, in Colombia or just outside? Yeah, yeah, eight hours out. Um, yeah, but for yeah. Colombia, just just outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, main production in, in, in Colombia, main production areas. I'd say ninety nine percent of the production is uh, is the Rio Negro area. In Medellin is number two, and the number one is the Bogota Sabana. We looked at those areas, but we found it difficult for us uh, yeah. to uh, to invest in that area. It's 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 a place which is pretty occupied. Um, and yeah, we actually went for a bit, a bit out of the of the standards, uh, the standard distances. So we worked very closely together with with uh, governmental and regional and uh, different provinces, yeah. and we eventually found a very beautiful place in the in the Valley del Cauca, um, and that's where we're now setting up uh, setting up a farm. So in the okay. former, it, it's a it's a former cattle farm, which we're trying to shape step by step into uh into a into a flower farm and then now the first i think we're now on the first 13 hectares yeah the, the first phase is about 13 hectares of production that is what we're now putting in and then slowly we're gonna expand roughly in the same our plan is roughly in the same uh, uh speed yeah up to the uh, up to the next phases so uh, yeah we we have already over 100 people working uh, on our farms okay. in colombia so yeah. it's quite a it's 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 not a start. It's a it's a company. It's pretty yeah. pretty pre yeah pretty dedicated, good team. Yeah, and that's really f uh, to uh, get a better position in the U.S. market, I think. Yeah, eventually at the moment, most of our sales in the United States comes out of Ethiopia. So we use passenger aircrafts out of Ethiopia into into the U.S., yeah. including some freighters. Um, yeah. On the longer run, I do see. Uh, also in the US, that's mainly so that's mainly a wholesale segment because the mass market segment in the US gets a lot of the bouquets get produced in, in Colombia itself. Yeah. 
So Hypericum is not a crop that is widely produced. It's produced, but not up to the, sta uh, the quality standards where we like to see. Uh, and, and the volume uh, what we, we're normally yeah, working with. So we, yeah, we, we, I think we can be quite complementary towards the various bouquet makers in, uh, in Colombia. Yeah. As well, we're pre pretty nicely and close to Port Buenaventura. Um, so our plan is also eventually see containers into Miami and, um, and Los Angeles. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's mainly why we're uh, located there. So it's, it's, it's market, it's, it's more efficient, it's also more environmentally friendly to do it that way. So that's one of the things why uh, we're a little bit hedged against Africa. So yeah. three, to be in multiple countries is, can be a very positive thing. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, Kate has got a question. Can you tell us how long from planting Hyper Hypericum and Veronica you can harvest the first stems? Depends a bit, but usually with Hypericum it's about 25 weeks. Um, but that's not really planting because Hypericum stays in the, in the field for quite a long time. But it, usually after, if it's if it matured a bit, matured a bit you harvest it, it takes about 25 more weeks uh, uh, to, uh, so you can harvest again. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's uh, that's that's basically it. Uh, and Veronica is a bit shorter. So uh, yeah. yeah. So whenever you you cut a, a Hypericum, you cut it twice per year, right? Twice, some, sometimes three times a year. It comes and goes faster. It, you have yeah. rainy seasons in Africa that that delay the whole uh, the whole process a bit. So it, it can go a bit faster, it can go a bit slower. But that's roughly uh, that's roughly uh, what we do. Yeah. So how do you plan this? Because uh, I, I know from a long, long time ago that uh, in Holland it's a summer flower and, and it uh, appears uh, when the time is right. Uh, but you are supplying every week or every day. You've got fresh products. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so, what, what, what we, so what we do, it's what they call a wave. Like a wave, keep on going. So you, you actually, it's very simple. You have a, an area, you harvest the area, and, the next, and two weeks later you go to the next area. And then two yeah. weeks later you go to the other area. And so you keep on hopping around from from area to area to area, and that's how you harvest your flowers. Yeah, but you can only do it if you have a stable climate, or more or less a stable climate. Yeah, and that's why all the flowers are grown on the on the equator. We have 12 hours of sun, 12 hours of night. So yeah. the flower thinks it's always spring or autumn, whatever you want to think about it. And that's what makes it so unique. In, in Africa, we can grow flowers without heating, nothing is just... In the sun, yeah, we're yeah. delayed during during rains, and it's it's usually difficult. Um, but that makes it very very beautiful. It's just out in the open, uh, in the fields, and and that's how we grow it. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. I mean, uh, you don't need a greenhouse; you can grow it outside and enjoy yeah, it. Just, <laughs> yeah, I can just grow it outside. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, did I forget to ask you something? Let's put it that, this way. I think uh, I asked you a lot of questions. Uh, I want to actually, I forgot one thing. I want to know what's your vision on the, on the future post Corona or COVID-19? What do you think will happen? Yeah, it's, I think it's very difficult. I, I rather take to, like to take a look into scenarios. Um, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you have an optimistic, you have a pessimistic and somewhere in the middle, a normal scenario. Scenario where I'm more or less looking at is that hopefully we have a September coming back with some uh, with with a, in a social social environment. Yeah, and that, that's what I truly hope for the world that that's the, that that is going to happen. Um, yeah, that's a normal scenario. A pessimistic scenario would be worse, um, but that yeah I do not think that that is realistic. So we're more or less looking at that the social world or social world in some way. Yeah, uh, uh, will come back in uh, in in September time, and that means that you, at that stage, weddings and uh, even maybe even delayed funerals and all kinds of things where you need uh, uh, flowers for events might yeah. come back around that time. Um, but yeah, the world is, has changed because of this a bit. And yeah, there's, there's not there's not much we can we can do about it. We can only go with the flow and 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 adapt. Yeah, and in terms of sales, will you see uh, more online sales or more actually uh, uh, sales uh, by calling people or physical and uh, visiting companies to get more sales? What, what do you no, think? You, 
And you see it yourself. Eh? Your uh, your flower circus was normally on a truck going to various places yeah. and doing demonstrations. In, and pretty soon you are doing your, your demonstration digitally. So I do think that in several markets, this the, the, the whole force by... Uh, even my team, we never worked. At, I worked at home, but I mean the rest of the team. We usually everybody was in the office, and yeah. now we're we're basically functioning like like normal. And it's not really normal, but yeah. over uh, all digitally. So I do think that there will be much much more bought digitally, and I also do hope that logistically, uh, the flower business will get a bit more efficient uh, in 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 several markets. Yeah. Uh, so less handling of the products, faster that it goes from the farm to the florist. In the same box, that is something we we've been looking on for quite a long time, or working on for quite a long time, and I hope that that will catch up a bit uh, in a good uh, in a good cold chain. But uh, yeah, we will see. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you for uh, joining our uh, our live stream, uh, Willem. I learned Much a lot again. Much appreciated. And I'm Thank happy to see uh, you, that you still have a positive mood and uh, you look forward to the future. You have to. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, I want to, to thank the people for watching. Thank you again, Willem. Hope to see you soon. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a live stream and we will have uh, contact with Australia, actually, with, with Harold. They are selling uh, greens from Australia all over the world. So uh, let's hear from Harold uh, what the current situation is in uh, Australia and how the export uh, over there is going. So uh, hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.